I want to turn to a clip from the film drone about the connection between video games and military recruitment. This clip features Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Brian Callahan and former U.S. Navy pilot Missy Cummings. But first, uh, uh, P.W. Singer, author of Wired for War. There's always been a connection between the world of war and the world of entertainment. And I call this phenomenon militainment, where the military world is actually now pulling tools from the world of entertainment to do its job better. The military has invested in creating video games that they're using as recruiting tools. How do we find our 18X pilots? There's been a lot of different theories. If you can answer that question or I can answer that question, you can make a lot of money for the Air Force right now because we don't know. Uh, we're trying to get our arms around what really does make the best candidate for unmanned airplanes and how do we identify these people early. Video gamers do have a skill set that is very important and actually enhances the skill set of drone operators. So when I talk to people about this, I say, we don't need Top Gun pilots anymore. We need Revenge of the Nerds. We're also joined by uh, Tonya Hessian Shea, the uh, director of the film uh, of Drone. Uh, Tonya, welcome to Democracy Now! Could you talk about this whole issue of the recruitment of gamers by the military? Yeah, I mean, the, the gamers have been incredibly important for the U.S. military, and uh, they have been targeting gamers in their recruiting strategies for the last decade. And this has been uh, very successful, and uh, it is now also spreading around the world. Uh, it is done in Germany and in Sweden and also in Norway. You know, gamers, um, their brains are pretty much wired to handle the, the challenges of modern warfare. and. Um, you know, their eye-thumb coordination, their multitasking, their team fighting, the target shooting, um, they are, are basically perfect uh, for the drone war. And the relationship between the military and the entertainment industry, I think it's very, very important to, you know, take a close look at here. Um, our children are basically growing up playing real war scenarios uh, from a very young age, and uh, this gamified you know, strange uh, perception of war has a big impact on them. To them, war is made to look fun, uh, killing is made to look cool, and it really shapes them. And uh, I think this militainment has a huge cost. And working with the drone operators, too, just, just seeing, you know, how the, the gaming attitude maybe is, you know, bleeding into how the drone program is operating uh, has been very disturbing to me. And, of course, you, you, uh, you guys know in your own experience that you're involved in a war where you never actually uh, meet or see the people you're killing. You have no direct relationship—no uh, real relationship to the war that you're uh, actually playing such a critical role in. I'm wondering what your, th your thoughts on that. Well, I think that one of the big things that we should um, address is, like, there's a lot of gamers that have been offended by stuff that we've talked about, and there's a lot of gamers that are offended by, you know, talking about the correlation between violence and video games, and there's a lot of studies that are out there that say that only certain video games cause certain aspects of this violence. And, um, and I'm an avid gamer, or I was, at least, and I'm trying to get back into it, and uh, I love this medium. It's just, the drone program destroyed my love of this medium as well. And I think gamers should be offended that the military and the government are using this type of thing to <coughs> uh, manipulate and, and recruit these guys. Um, it, it's a blatant misuse of power, abuse of power. Um, it, it shouldn't be something along the lines of like, yeah, <clears throat> I want to play this game with my friends or even people that you don't, you, you don't see them face to face. You meet a lot of people instantaneously all over the world. We're so interconnected. We're more interconnected now than we've ever been in the entirety of human history. And that's being exploited to help people kill one another. Hmm. And Michael Haas, as we wrap up, what you want people to be left with today, and uh, there's a large military audience here, too, what you have to say to your fellow servicemen and women. On the other side of that screen, they're very real. It, it feels like a video game and it looks like a video game, but it's very, very real. And to keep that in mind and not become 
disconnected from, from your own humanity and not to take away theirs. That's what I'd want to leave them with. Sean Westmoreland. We should all take responsibility for what we do at all times. Uh, I have a cell phone in my pocket. It has uh, medals in there that were extracted from the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, where there's been a war for 15 years and 4 million, I think 4.4 .4 million people have died. I know that. And that bothers me. You've all left mm -hmm. the military. Were you, did they request you re-enlist? Yeah. Were you offered a bonus to re-enlist? We all were. How much? Mm -hmm. Uh, Fifty thousand. How much one? Eighty thousand. Stephen. Over a hundred thousand. One hundred nine thousand plus a step promotion and safety evaluation upgrader. What did you say? I said uh, f that. I'm getting out. <laughs> Stephen. I'm done. Michael. I, I made my decision to get out long before that reenlistment became a even an option. Sean. I burned my uniform in my boss's grill and I hitchhiked around the world. But for so many young people, that's a lot of money, and, and they're, uh, they're tempted, I guess. And, and they're going to keep increasing the bonuses, obviously, as, uh, as uh, the, uh, the situation in the war on terror continues. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you all for being with us. Uh, very important what you had to say today. Brandon Bryant, Sean Westmoreland, Stephen Lewis, and Michael Haas. Thank you so much. Uh, Tanya Messenche, director of the film Drone as well, and Jesslyn Radak with the Whistleblower and Source Protection Program, known as Whisper at Expose Facts. And that does it for our show. An update right now on what's happening in Mali as we speak. Uh, the ongoing hostage situation in Bamako, the capital. The U.S. military says U.S. special operation troops are working with Malian special operation forces to free the more than 140 hostages still inside the Radisson Blue Hotel right there in Bamako, which was seized by suspected Islamist gunmen this morning. And that does it for a broadcast.